Hello everybody. So another real quick daily video. I think I'm on day number 15 now. <laughs> I'm still having issues over the uh, last video where I ate the world's hottest chip because I ran out of political topics to talk about. But nonetheless, let's talk about Biden's new corrupt advisor. So Biden is now creating his, his cabinet. He chose an individual who is one of the top recipients for fossil fuel money in the entire Democratic Party. Do you guys hear that? So there's weird stuff going on outside. Anyway, this guy's name is Cedric Richmond, and he is the Louisiana representative. My notes off here to the side. So he's going to be the senior advisor and director of White House Office and Public Engagement. <laughs> this individual received 113 thousand dollars from fossil fuel industries for perspective he supported the the um what was it called keystone pipeline there we go for those of you who do not know the keystone pipeline was a pipeline that would absolutely destroy ecosystems from canada all the way throughout the u.s it just goes like straight down the thing about oil pipelines as well is it's known for their spills because when you're transporting somewhere around 50,000 to 100 plus thousand gallons of oil per day, there's going to be, you know, problems if there is a crack or a spill. For example, kind of apples to oranges, but I think it proves the point. There's something called uh, the BP oil spill. There's probably like a technical name of it, but about a decade ago, off the coast of Florida. I'm gonna personalize this and tell you guys an interesting story real quick to kind of prove the point. Jesus, there's like a train outside. So there's an oil spill off of Florida by BP Oil Company. And it launched literally hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into the environment. So little Zach in high school was swimming around in Florida on vacation because my pasty self needed a nice tan because I live in Oregon. So I was off swimming in Florida and I realized that there's a lot of this like tar type of material. So I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. So I walk into a, a hotel, which was kind of like right alongside the beach. And I asked them, I was like, hey, there's oil everywhere. What is going on over here? Turns out people there knew a thing or two about what was going on, but nobody really wanted to talk about it. So it turns out this was in Pensacola. Yeah, Pensacola Beach. So you guys could do some research there if you would like. It was in the summer-ish time period. But uh, she told me to sit right there where I was. So I'm just dripping wet, you know, nice and soggy. It was gross out. A British guy comes over and asks me, you know, kind of the situation. So I tell him, hey, look, there's oil everywhere. And he's freaking out. And I asked him, like, hey, was there like an oil spill or something like that? And he was asking me very aggressive questions. Like, where was I swimming? Why was I swimming over there? How far was I swimming? These types of things. And it turns out that I wasn't the only one who had noticed this. Everybody noticed, but apparently nobody actually told the, the people who work at the hotels. Nobody talked about it. So everybody knew it was there. It's just nobody actually came up and asked a question about what was going on. As a result, hundreds of thousands of, of animals ended up dying in this process. Oil spills, whether it be in the sea or in a pipeline, are extremely detrimental. Horrible. If anybody supports those types of policies, you can guarantee they're a terrible person. You can't. You can guarantee it. Now, I get it. There's jobs attached to these types of things. But there are alternative things that we could do for jobs. Like, for example, the Green New Deal. Okay? So, full circle back to this guy. He supported the Keystone Pipeline. And he's also the largest recipient of, of money from uh, fossil fuel industries. Food for thought, maybe, just maybe, having one of the all-time most corrupt Democrats in your cabinet, it's not going to win a whole lot of support. And you cannot blame me if one of my only reasons to vote for you to begin with was because you would do more for climate change and you end up supporting somebody like that. You're, you can't blame me if you keep doing stuff like this and people like myself are going to turn around and say, you know what? <laughs> If Trump doesn't, isn't the one running in uh, 2024, I'm not voting for you. I don't know. 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. But just another spit in the face to the left. And I dare you to argue otherwise. <laughs>